I don't know um, how much I can talk about uh, the Azerbaijan attack on Nagorno-Karabakh, on Artsakh, uh, but um, I, I feel I need to put my cards firmly on the table. I worked with um, Ruben Vardanyan, who's been arrested. I worked with his family in Moscow. I taught in the school run by uh, his family in Dilijan in Armenia. I, I, I certainly know Ruben and the image which is being put out by the Azerbaijani authorities is not one I recognize at all. Uh, the person I recognize in Ruben Vardanyan is the man who um, started a charity to help Armenians, the Aurora Charity, uh, the man who was utterly invested in education, uh, setting up a huge educational complex uh, just outside Moscow, and uh, I, I know a number of people who were involved in that. Um, if it was used for money laundering, that's um, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure there were people involved in that, but I don't believe it was set up for that purpose. Um, this was a family that was utterly dedicated to education, to enriching the community. I went to a number of churches and monasteries in Armenia that had been restored by the Vardanians. And anyway, the point of this video is um, to say that I, I don't understand how at a time when there is such a crisis of migration going on around the world, a country can force an entire population, an entire enclave to become refugees, to this flood of refugees from Nagorno-Karabakh back to Armenia, uh, the forsaking of their homes, the recognition they will never go back. Um, and while the Azerbaijanis have um, interests in the area, have um, that there are mosques in the area and so on, there are also very old churches in the area, old, really old monasteries. Um, Armenia was the was the first national church ever. Um, it predates any other country. It predates Byzantium. It predates Constantinople. And it is an extraordinary um, viciousness. Uh, and maybe taking its cue from the sort of viciousness that's going on in Ukraine by Russia. Uh, the Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh were partly um, safeguarded by Russian peacekeeping forces. Where were they? And this corridor which had been blocked is now suddenly opened, uh, and it's that corridor where Vardanian was captured, leaving with his people uh, going back into exile. Well, you know, uh, as I say, it doesn't matter what what rights um, on either side people feel they've got. It seems to me ill-timed of any nation to actively create or actively seed the um, creation of a migration of this size. Um, and I think it's uh, deeply, deeply regrettable. But I think it is part of the spreading of the evil um, orchestrated by Putin in the Kremlin when he invaded Ukraine. Putin has given legitimacy to uh, the seizure of territory. And I think the, uh, the Nagorno-Karabakh situation is just one of many that we will see over the next few years. Um, it's a domino effect. I, I think it's hugely regrettable. And I know people on both sides. Uh, I know people in Baku who vehemently argue about uh, 
their territory and how it is, uh, Azerbaijani and so on, uh, and I know people in Armenia. And uh, this is something that should have been dealt with peacefully and we should have seen a cohesive um, an integrated community instead of uh, this level of hostility for so many years, for 30 years. Um, and it's, it's, it's deeply, deeply regrettable, reprehensible, wrong. Uh, there have been people in the, in the Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, in, in the Artsakh um, uh, community, voluntarily surrendering themselves to arrest um, on the grounds that if they, if they gave themselves up, um, then there would be less recrimination.